What's up, y'all? Welcome to Base Flip. This uh, episode has got, we got Louis Gomez, Louis J. Gomez, that prick, um, <laughs> Josh Ricardo, and Tom Cowell. We, today we talk about uh, whether or not sex addiction is a real thing. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I think fucking a midget, you should do. I think you gotta. Anyway. Yeah, um, I thought that would be your stance. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, sometimes I come up with different stances that you don't think. Anyway, um, why also... Uh, what you need to do to attract attention, like what what is it actual the science of the science of attraction? We go we cover mm-hmm. that a little bit, um, and we also talk about when on therapy we talk about when and how you need to take charge of your relationship always and every day. I mm-hmm. mean, well, did I spoiler. give it away? Did spoiler. I give it spoiler? <laughs> I, I think they saw that coming. <laughs> also, we had Josh come in because we wanted you know he got that uh. You got his well, one-man show coming uh, there's up. There's a show I'm sort of directing for him uh, and helping him out with uh, called uh, Talk Story, and it's about his sex addiction, and it's uh, it's right up the alley of this show. Yeah. Some of the stories he's told and some of them he has is pretty great stuff. Uh, it's going to be funny and interesting, and uh, I would you know love it if you guys came out to check it out. Uh, it's at Cap 21. Uh, it's from January 23rd to the, through the 25th, and uh, you can find more info uh, at Josh's Twitter. You can find Josh Ricardo online, and, you know, yeah, we'll have all that info. But it's definitely a show you guys we'll should check out. We'll tweet it out. Harry will tweet it out. We'll retweet it so you can check that out. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Oh, shit. It's about to go down, people. You, you, feel, the, you feel the excitement? I'm feeling the excitement. Absolutely. It's a little warm in here. It's getting turned up. Yeah. It's getting turned up. Turned up. Where'd you learn that? Uh, you know, this weekend? The streets, this weekend? On these streets, yo. You watching Basketball Wives? <laughs> shit is getting turned up. Turned up. Oh, shit. We going old school, too. Oh, jeez. Welcome to the Pimp Cup. Y'all, it's going down. GYBB, get your balls back. Stop playing. Learn, bitches. Learn. Mm. It is really going down here. It's a little warm today because the, the AC got frozen by the cold weather. It's crazy. I don't even know what to do. Mara, how you doing, baby? I'm pretty excited. Uh, you, are you excited? I'm excited. Oh, my God. Your hair looks beautiful. <laughs> I brushed it. Harry, how you doing, baby? <laughs> Dante, I'm doing good despite the fact that uh, I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down. It is. It's difficult. People say... Uh, Pimping ain't easy, and when they say that, uh, they would be right. Absolutely. It, it's not so easy. The sexual uh, revolution is being podcasted. Stop playing. I'm, I am excited tonight. You understand? I am excited. Just today. So excited you forgot to say I, learn, bitches, learn. Learn, bitches, learn. <laughs> I'm getting there. That's what bitches need to do is learn. Listen, um, this, this show... This one? Yeah, it's, it's just your average, ordinary show, This right? would have been the average show. Right. But somehow, it came together in a way that's special. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a special show. This one? Yeah, I mean, I know I've said that 90 <laughs> times before this. But this one, this one here is special. A um, little bit of old, a little bit of new. Um, it, it's I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's just... It's just I'm excited. It's the only thing that I can say about any of this is that I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to go from old to new, new to, I don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, Today, we have my boy. He's kind of Puerto Rican, kind of. I mean, he's He's kind of defected. I feel like he's a political prisoner. Sort of Rican. Yeah. Puerto Rican. (laughs) This guy, uh, Comedy Central, Hammer Fisted Podcast. Uh, you know what, dude, podcast. He's Whoa. like a podcast fiend. Give it up for Luis Gomez, y'all. Give it up for Luis Gomez. Luis J. Gomez. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't sorry. forget my middle initial, I'm, Dante. I apologize. I apologize. What is the J for? Juice layer. Is that? Is that? Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I guess we, <laughs> we'll <laughs> never get sponsorship now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mel Gibson. Also, uh, the next guy I want to introduce to you, this dude, um, might... Might actually have been pimp of the year. Absolutely. <laughs> Three years in a row. Uh, this dude, uh, filmmaker, actor, uh, writer. Dan, Dan Shack, you look alike. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Ouch. 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 I go Ouch. deep. <laughs> Jesus. We reach more people than that, Louis. Wow, we don't you have just, to go. You're digging in the open mic pool for that, <laughs> huh? Christ. Give it up for my man, Josh Ricardo. Yo, Josh Whoa. Ricardo. 
Yeah. Also, also, Mari, I want you to do this one. Okay. Uh, right. Good friend of mine from last night. From uh, last night. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you like yelling tight. Yelling like we're, brother and we're sister. We're like this. We're like this. Well, he, we were talking. You know, he's a married man. Married man. Uh, so we're going to, he's going to be our therapist guest. Fan of the, fan fan of of the, the podcast show. as well. Comedian. Comedian. Actor. Major actor. More, more so. Uh, Mr. Tom Cowell. Tom Cowell, give it up for Tom Cowell. Can I can I also just make note of what I just noticed there? What's that? Dante just fucking forgot his name. That's yeah. why he no, had you intro it. Actually, I just <laughs> met him today. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt bag. All right, so uh, I just met him today. So and it was her friend. You didn't know his name. That's why I you know his name was Tom. <laughs> you piece of shit. Now shut your fucking mouth. I, oh. I see a I see a real naked coming up. <laughs> Me versus Dante one on one. It's happening, baby, on the base fill up show. <laughs> oh man, I'm 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 excited because this this is this show kind of came together like a mishmash, pitch posh, last minute. Usually I, we plan years in advance to, to have our guests on. Today we put the show together yesterday. True. I just called motherfuckers up. Josh has got something going on he wanted to promote. I've been wanting to get Lewis on there. And fucking Mara picked some dude up, some married dude up out of the street. <laughs> That's per the use. That's <laughs> my normal, my MO. Totes my goats. Totes, totes <laughs> my goats. So, um, totes content. It's, it's, uh, it's real dope because, man, uh, last time we had you on, Lewis, um, we had we had uh, we had the uh, whole Latino we had a whole Latina yeah. diaspora, and I think that's where you figured out that I wasn't actually that Latino. Yeah, I was like, ugh, this is not this wasn't more a of good a choice. More yeah. of just a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, there's something going on. There's a lot of tension. Mara here. is extraordinarily attracted to me. Oh, uh, is that what it is? <laughs> is that what it is? I haven't had a carb in seven days. She notices my cheekbones. It's really? Is your cheek? Is yeah. that what she? Okay. <laughs> Josh and Josh, Josh was my my dog. Josh, you got some shit going on with Harry. I know you wanted to to pull, but you, I mean, you can mention we it can, now. We'll whenever, plug, yeah, whenever you're ready, we'll, we'll plug it. But um, no, let's, bring it, let's talk about it now for a second. Right. Why not, since uh, it's well, okay, so I have, I'm doing a one man show. It's about my sex addiction. Right. That's kind of what it's about. It's about my fucked up family. It's like that's yeah. That's all I'm here to talk and about. here's the I, thing: what better place to talk about that than here? Than base Phil. And Absolutely. and here's the thing: I don't really believe in sex addiction. Yeah. I just believe in options. <laughs> So, because <laughs> I know a lot of motherfuckers that would be addicted to pussy if they had more options. Well, they just don't have options. It's only an addiction when it becomes a problem, and you haven't reached that point yet. We we like to call them hobbyists. <laughs> I think I, I think uh, you know I think most fat guys have a sex addiction because it's it, I think we were I was a fat guy growing up and I didn't have the opportunity to have sex that much when I was younger and then when I finally started having sex when I was like high school and college I mean I would just smash any pussy that was available to me it, it didn't matter what the girl you realize like. that's I think it's every most, guy yeah, everywhere <laughs> all yeah. over the world like very. Uh. Very few dudes are choosing. Like, it's really hard to not give some pussy away. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but there are dudes, and I think you nailed it when you said it's about options. It's like, no, no fucking John Mayer isn't going to go fuck some giant beast of a chick because he can go fuck 10. Sure, 11s. he can bunch a bunch of 10s. Hey, but can I ask a question? Sure, about absolutely. Alcohol addiction. I know what that looks like. Uh, right. That's a guy drinking. Looks like Harry Turjanian. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Look all the time. That, that I know, I can see it. What, okay. does, what does sex addiction look like? What, what, tell me what that your problem looked like. I'll put up an image of Josh Accardo on our Instagram for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think like a, a major, major moment for me is... Uh, I was I had a threesome with a with a Brazil a small like a midget Brazilian woman with a very small left arm and I remember walking out of there like what am I'm I doing? a I'm a champion no I, <laughs> the fact that I yeah. I felt so good about myself she was a midget yeah it was a midget and then a regular size Puerto Rican girl so it was a regular size Puerto Rican girl right. and a little person Brazilian with a woman arm. with Those a hookers? small left arm no that's the thing I never I never had to pay I never had to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't pay anyway. So <laughs> the fact that I never had to pay, and that the as weird as I could get, it just started to become now, problematic. But yeah, yeah, it's, I don't My work. assistant manager at uh, when I was working at a health club, he came in one day and he he sat down on his day, one day off, and I was like, "Dude, what are you doing here?" He goes, "Oh, my wife just found my emails," and I was like, "All right, I still love you no matter what. What mm -hmm. are you trying to tell me?" And he was he was fucking everything, men, women. 
Really? Every, wow. That, he had to go to Sex ad- Addicts Anonymous, but just to get like his wife and kids back. Here's, <laughs> but when you when you um, I don't th- think I'm wrong. But I then don't, I don't. I, you know therapy, what? You figure out uh, maybe I'm wrong. It's, it's <laughs> fucked up. But, but you're you know right. Here's a weird. Here, let me say this. I weird. don't know. I, I, I again, Josh Carter has beat me once again. Yes, I slept with a midget, but not with a little arm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm up in Annie's. Finds man. a way. Finds a way to up the Annie every time. <laughs> not a little arm. I don't know if I want a little arm, but here. Can I but, ask a question? Does sure. it turn you on a little bit that it was a midget? Yes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah. fucked. I fucked around with a chick in a wheelchair, and it, it yes. really turned me on. I was <laughs> yeah. like, I dig this. I know yeah. that girl. Oh, yeah, you know her. But a yeah. hot, but a hot. Like, imagine if she was a, this little person. A hot midget was with a, a tiny 10, arm. Was a, a a ten man he, ass face. A hot mi- right, a hot smoking. No, yes. I'm very confused. I'm very confused. This is a story. It's not an addiction. No, you know no, but I mean? you're well, asking. You and you know what? Yeah. That's, that's, story that's of kind of, I thought. Well, here's the thing. That's what I kind of say. When you get an up, if you, just out there, fans out there, Square Pen Brigade, if you get a chance to fuck a midget, you have to. <laughs> you got to do it. Sure, you have yeah, to. You yeah. can't yeah. not do that. But for the simple reason. What 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 makes a midget? Anything under 6'3"? 4'7". No, oh, sorry. Uh, just <laughs> four, 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 seven. Four, seven. <laughs> you put up the little person dictionary. <laughs> Yeah, four seven. <laughs> four right seven. away. Anything four seven. Anything under four seven. Sorry, was that quick? That was too quick, right? Not You've to been be thinking con- about it a lot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> not to be confused with dwarves. That's a different subject entirely. Well, that's not <laughs> four seven is a midget. So just so you know. Um, but here's the thing: you gotta because when you run into your boy the next day and he, you go, well, what did you do? And he goes, yo, I watched the game. Uh, he goes, what did you do? And you go, hmm, uh, uh-huh, I guess what? I uh, Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And my mentality is different than that in the sense that that's why my, I have a sex addiction. Too. I, most of the time, I've done it behind people's backs that I was dating, or I don't talk about it at all unless it's with, yes. like, family people. I don't sit there and bra- I don't have, like, a, well, a guy group that I'm going to brag at. I'm, here's not, the, here's I'm just the, weird. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. And uh, and it's uh, – me and Mar was talking about this today, about um, – how having a threesome with a midget? No, <laughs> not about that. Uh, we were talking about this. Although they could have. We been. just That's schedule not. that. We don't. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> we and Mara are in my world now. They are part of he is my stuck with us. world. Yeah, we are you know part I mean? of. Yeah. So, so what happens is because they're in part of my world, a lot of time Harry has, which his world is different than mine, and Mara's world is different than mine. So a lot of time they have to explain my friend their friendship with me. They have to they have to defend. they have to defend their friendship with me constantly <laughs> or explain how it's possible. Yeah, yes. So yeah. cuz they all have these they have square like they have square mentality about my life. Why right? why would you point at me? <laughs> like I'm a square. Uh, you're a square. Are you fucking kidding me, Dante? You're a square. I'm a real ass dude. I'm a fucking. I didn't say you're not a real dude. I'm a psycho s- killer. Kesky <laughs> say, motherfucker. What's up? Any <laughs> anytime you have to Dino say that. Bravo. <laughs> that's that's usually it's not the case. <laughs> but what I'm, I'm saying, but <laughs> I also, also, also was anytime you, you quote a Talking Head song, you're probably not <laughs> as bad as French. you. I speak French. Think you are. <laughs> Here's a, it, I actually pointed to you because you do know me. I do. You know me for a long time. Long time. Dante was like the first comedy show I ever went to in my entire life. And and like we're good friends. Like I love this dude. Like I really love. Look in a in a real way, I love dude as a friend. Can I get a beer? Come yeah. fucking blazing hot in here. But, but so what I'm saying, I was pointing at you because you know that I don't do things for other people's benefit. Like I've no. always been the same way that I am now. Not benefit other people to impress other people because right, you do a I, lot of things for other people's benefit. Right, right. I, I'm, a, I'm a helpful dude, but I. Uh, I, I, but you I don't, don't give a shit about what I anyone don't fuck thinks. What somebody thinks. Right. So and and whatever I am, I am. The, so a lot of times they have to explain. Like Mara, somebody was telling Mara, "Oh, Dante's insecure because he look at it how. Of course he's insecure. He's got rings and fur coats and alligators." <laughs> And and Mara's oh I so I, he was like no he's insecure I was like no no and I, he kept fighting me on it and I said sit down and listen to me he is not insecure he is obnoxiously confident <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? and I was like thank you question mark <laughs> who was this oh just a, a comedian say his name who cares uh it you was know I don't give a it name. was Andrew Collin he knows Andrew, who's Andrew oh he, little he Andrew little Andrew yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah he's who's whatever. Andrew Collin a note he, to everyone a, in comedy don't talk 
to Mare anymore. Blow your fucking spot Mare's got a big now, fucking mouth. I'm like, I can't wait to see Andrew to crack him and hinge his motherfucking <laughs> jaw. No, I'm not. I'm no, not. he's Andrew. not. He, he, he's cool with Dante. Uh, he is cool with me. So the point point being is... It's okay you, to have opinions, guys. I yeah. think I think with Andrew, don't tell him to me. in all fairness... <laughs> well, he Andrew might. told me that Dante is a bitch and he wouldn't do shit. <laughs> yeah, so he I'm said that saying. to me, too. Weird this morning. In all fairness, I'm going to see you, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> Holla at your boy. I'm seeing you. <laughs> I'm going to reach not, out and touch you, son. I'm sorry. No, just he might not believe it's real. <laughs> it might be so intense to him that he might be going like, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah, we, we had a thing where, dude, where Harry's... <sighs> You Harry's have to marinate friend. in you for a little while before because you like. I get it. I understand it's a lot to take in. Dante I, is super intimidating at first, but when you fucking break that ex- exterior, you find out deep on the inside he's actually a fucking murderer. Don't <laughs> actually. <be intimidating. laughs> really, you should be intimidated. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. You I, are. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, a, I'm in a I'm book club. I'm glad you're my fucking friend. I'm in a book club. That's all you need to know. Do you realize when I met you, uh, like literally two months into us knowing each other, you showed me a video of you dancing in a G-string, and I was like, yeah, he's a tough guy, but I just saw that. We're good. We're <laughs> in a good place. Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw this guy's ass and balls. Here's, my, good. <laughs> here's my favorite memory of, of con- contradicting images of Dante was me walking up to stand-up New York, and he's just sitting on a stoop, you know, motorcycle in front of him, and then he just has, a like, a brown bag in his hand, and he goes, uh, you want a gummy? You want a gummy bag? <laughs> <laughs> and he just has, like, a bag full of candy. Like, he just did that voice. You want a gummy? Like... <laughs> And that is the onion that is yeah. me. Peeling back layers today. But I the, think that night he uh, knocked somebody out a window, I, I, if I remember. I, yeah, but I, and I, it's, a, it's a thin line between the switch is easy to, to pop. But here, here's my point, though. I think when you, when you live your life, Josh, in the way that you live your life, mm. and you don't do it for other people, people don't understand what that is because so many people live in the scope of, yeah. of who's watching me and who's... Who's what do people think or what are they gonna say about this? Mm-hmm. And I think in when you're living in that life, and that's kind of what Beige Philip is about. It's about finding your own place, finding the comfort in your own space. Um, so if you're not getting laid or you or you or you you're you're not um you you're married and you can't handle your wife or you can't smoke weed in front of your wife sometime, you can't even smoke weed in front of your wife. I'll smoke weed in front of her right you now. You're full of shit. Crazy? You're full of shit. <laughs> Bro, oh, is that why you're there, slowing down when you were talking to him? Don't, don't, don't delete this episode. All right. <laughs> 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 we cut that out? <laughs> so you are being comfortable in your, in your own space is what's, what's important. And I think that just because you may be perceived as outrageous, then people say, well, I, I, I'm not that. I, I, and and as I was talking to somebody about this today, and I said, your success, and, and, and your success in life or your... I guess what other people would pe- perceive as your outrageousness or your ability to be honest about who you are makes other people feel insecure because people f- see you as their equal, right? So all of, everybody thinks that they're your equal, and they may not be your equal. When you do things that are out of the context of what they would even be able to do, whether in, in terms of even what they're w- willing to think of, they go, holy shit, I'm not as equal. It makes it, it's almost like holding a mirror up to your, themselves, and then they have to ask the question: Well, uh, are you are you equal to this person that you perceive yourself to be equals as? If you're not, there's only three reasons why you're not equal. Number one, he's better than you. Number two, he's your equals and he works harder. Number three, you're equals and you don't work hard enough. Nobody wants to admit that they don't work hard enough. Nobody wants to admit that somebody's better, so it must be something wrong with, or, or the person is cheating. That person's fucked up. Something's wrong with you because they're better than you. There's something that they're doing that's fucked up. Right. And so you, you, your success, your, your, your extraordinariness makes people feel uncomfortable. Your comfort in yourself mm. makes people uncomfortable. And that, that's, what, that's what makes people... But that's I don't, where I don't the hate to, comes I don't mean from. to cut you off, but I do have to point out that Josh Carter just smelled my drink. <laughs> so I'm on a cleanse. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I want to so no, no, no. So the, the, the point of all of this is that we are all better than Josh Carter. 
period. <laughs> you're all successful. <laughs> so, Lou, with that attention span, you're not smoking pot now. I am smoking pot. Oof, holy okay. shit. Okay. So, but, um, so, 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 I didn't mean to cut you off. No, yeah. but so when I was talking, his, this thing about, I don't, I think the sex addiction thing is bullshit. I'm just saying it got, the reason why I admit to it being an addiction is because it got in the way of leading my life. Like sometimes, like no, I don't agree with that though, because we think with our dicks. Everyone thinks with our dicks. That, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I just want to. I want to. I want to just qualify. And I think this is what we're trying to get to before. I want to qualify your sex addiction. Mm-hmm. Number one, what do you define as a sex addict? Like, what's your definition of a sex addict? Okay. And then number two, like, were you not able to like be faithful to a chick? Were you constantly going Never. and fucking seeing different <laughs> chicks Never. every yeah. night? You were fucking a different chick. Yeah. Um, how many yes. chicks have you been with? I'm a gentleman. I never count, <laughs> but like hundreds, <laughs> probably. Okay, all right. You might be and happy. it was it was getting in the way of uh of, I never let it get in the way necessarily of comedy as far as getting to shows and make sure I was performing and doing my due diligence and writing and but it was definitely getting in the way of of hanging out and like oh there's a st- party at stand up New York tonight the holiday party, years ago or over the last you few years made I would have. No, I would have been banging somebody. Oh, you would have been banging. Oh, okay, right, right, okay, right. right. No girls there. Mars there, but she's. Looking for famous dudes. I'm just trying to be me. <laughs> I'm trying to be just me, girl. Ones. I'm just, just trying to be kids. me. <laughs> so it would interfriend to a degree in, in it would certain t- it would of friends. Yes, yeah. I would probably be. So that yeah, is an addiction. Oh. I would probably have more friends. Except you and I are friends. You're like the Harry's my friend. Yeah, yeah. like three friends, <laughs> and one of them's not here. The, the two of them are. You're an all right guy. <laughs> so how long has it been since you've been ad- like you admitted rock bottom like and now i'm changing my life uh oh yeah he hasn't changed anything <laughs> no, <laughs> he's just he's talking about actually it. you know what i have though the last like four months i have been i've been in a really good place meaning i haven't like <laughs> fucked anyone in a bathroom or strangers <laughs> i've been good i might have done a little sexting a lot of it, <laughs> but it's a lot better than I, where I was. Here, put it that way. I wanna. I don't. All right. I, I don't want to uh, like over. I don't want to ruin anything you got going. So let me know if if I do and I can. We'll, we'll take care of it. Um, but there were a couple things. One, you did have to stop using Tinder, correct? Right? You did. Have oh to, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was. That Tinder was like was really. I'm just really. I'm. I found my strength. It's. Um, it's not being in public and talking to women. You know, I'm, I'm very. I'm, I never want to be the guy that goes up to a woman in a bar and, and is like, "Hey, what was your sign?" I don't want. I always feel like those guys ruin it. So I'm really strong. Really when it comes good to, with social networking. Yeah, with not, cyber not with shit. your career. Just no, no, no. With <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just I'm a failure in my career. But just <laughs> Josh has four <laughs> followers Tinder. on Twitter, but he has fucked <laughs> at least fifty he has women. Four thousand yeah. Tinder <laughs> Tinder hookups, man. I got them all. <laughs> okay, Cupid. I was a. I had to get off that. Because I was, it was done. I couldn't but get what, off. What's, it. what's the problem with smashing puss, though? I don't understand how that's, that's like. That's not the. It's well, I don't like. Uh, he's saying that it stopped him from having a regular life. It's dude, a lot that, of no, time that, can I can I be honest with you, dude? I feel like you're using your sex addiction, which is just you being a dude who can get some puss. Which you know we've all, we've all been there. All the shit you're fucking chicks in bathrooms, strangers. You know, having people watch me fucking chicks in public. Uh, we're all there. We've all fucking been there. I, I can't even get a boner if there's not a video camera out anymore. All right. <laughs> But I think that you're using a lot of those things as like almost like crutches to fucking uh, no, I'm not going to say excuses, but for reasons to not kind of be where you're at. I think that it's it's easy to go. Oh, I'm going to go fuck this chick and not go to that party. But it's the same way that it's easy for me to go smoke weed or fucking watch uh, play video games for some people, go watch a movie for some you're people. You're saying it's just normal procrastination. That, that yeah, this dude. I think I, 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 I don't believe. think I don't think one has to do with the other. I think you're just and we all do it. I'm not saying you're any no, no, worse no, than me or the next guy. Uh-huh. I'm just saying that that I think is just a thing you're choosing to do with your time. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Unless you're not using a rubber and you're, you know, you're I risking. Just, I just want to say I'm privileged to be witnessing the beginnings of a relapse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, go get some puss. I, I, I think you're. I, I think tell you us might about have mis- it. Misunderstanding <laughs> the fact. I don't really believe completely that it's gotten in the way of my career necessarily, but it has gotten in the way of my life. No, no, no in general. Is, it has. We're telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not using it as an excuse, or I'm not using it as procrastination. I'm not saying I'm not gonna go to a party because I'm gonna bang somebody. As much as I'm saying. I'm f- way more socially awkward is more of a reason why I don't want to go to a party than it is me well, banging is, somebody. Look, just so we know for, that's the, for the fans, hit, um, J- J- Josh and I are working on a project. Uh, we're going to do – We've been. Uh, I've been asked so much to put together pickup 
a, a pickup program, pickup artist program, um, just to teach basic pickup. And one of the things that when we, we, we sat down and we talked is, is he said that his his forte is pickup online, which is which is so intricate now because of where we're at, yeah. where we're at right now, where that is not my thing at all. I'm I'm at a, in a bitch face, like ba da ba da ba ba. Dante's like, really <laughs> very good at picking up at the discotheque. Like he at started. the discotheque, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's you are great. You and your, all your sisters, you do everything together. <laughs> so, a lot of gun fingering. A, yeah. Hey, 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 you, hey, you, your two you. sisters, you look beautiful. Yeah. I like you both. <laughs> I, mean, I need to go to more I don't of these, even know what a lot of, these a lot Borat discos. <laughs> <sound> amazing. <laughs> a lot of his tips involve popping and locking and then uh, throwing yeah, out I, some cards. I've never done the online thing. I think that, I, I mean, I've always been, I'm kind of like a serial Well, monogamous. how long have you been with B? I've been with B for four and a half years. Um, and even before that, I was with the chick for like two years. And then I was with another chick. And the other chicks I all fucked around on, like a lot. Like I, I like the, my, a couple of my girlfriends, like from the past, like it was like I wasn't even in a relationship and mm. I would just fuck chicks. But as a comic, you know, the easiest thing in the world is to just go to talk, do right. Oh, I'll do a great but set. Not, not even talk, dude. Well, I mean, uh, mediocre when it the, comes the, to the, you. I used to just play the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I used to just play the game, dude. It didn't even matter if you did well, though. You could have a bad set. You could. I remember I, the most pussy I ever got was when I was first starting off in comedy because at that time. The goal was to get pussy out of it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. so I think if your mind is set on that specific goal, you kind of you're putting out whatever those signals are. Right now, it's about fucking making money and being a professional. But in the beginning, it was all about hey, getting some stage time, getting some pussy, getting drunk, doing some drugs. Do the beginning of the you know in stand up New York when I first started, we, it was just like we'd fuck chicks downstairs in the bathrooms and in the back thing. Wayne would let us just do coke and weed in the basement. It was like a free for all. Um, but it's um, I think you're the one with the problem. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Josh. I mean, well, your no, life sounds real, pretty tame. I don't. I don't <laughs> categorize yeah, my myself. Shit together. I've never categorized myself as a sex addict. Get your shit together, Lewis. But I why think, are you so angry at my categorization of yeah, yeah, sex addict? I don't addict. like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. That's a, at least that's a real. That's a real reason. <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying. Like, uh, it's not like. Um, I don't. Know, I I think we're all kind of in that same boat. But I, I now, who think... says you're a sex addict? Your your therapist says you're a sex addict. I I mean. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't bring it up a lot, but it's been discussed that I have right. a problem. Yeah. But I would just be like, yo, that motherfucker's the shit. <laughs> like, I mean, if I was your therapist, I'd be like, yo, you the shit, son. Yeah. The fuck I you wish talk you were about? My you the shit. And when I kill myself, he's <laughs> like, know? hey, that guy was pretty great, though. That, like, was, <laughs> that was worth well, 150 like, bucks. Why? You just, you the shit. What the fuck you talk about? I got a problem, son. I'm glad I talked to you and Louis J, man. Are you, are you, <laughs> sir? Are you sure you have a PhD? Because oh, you the shit, son. Well, hey, do you? Let me ask you a question. Do you use comedy a lot to get girl? I rarely ever. I no. swear to God, I rarely ever bring no. up a comic when no, I'm talking never. to women. Rarely, not I like rarely the second ever talk, date. I mean, I don't anymore. But I've rarely ever talked to women at a bar and just had a conversation. It's always do comedy, get off stage, let's go have a drink, get her to the two or three. So it's in the morning it's almost the the assumption like that. The framing is there. Let me explain that. Did framing. you hear that? To the he's like, get to the two, three a.m. Like she's yeah, like, worn out. Get to that mark. <laughs> you just wear a bitch down. <laughs> Take her down to girl, the last round. Let me tell comics something. If any girl goes out with a bar, out, out to the bar afterwards, there's an implied thing there. You're obviously hanging out for a reason. By the time two or three in the morning hits, you're probably gonna end up fucking her. If you're there at that point, you know what I'm and saying. And that's why we got into that fight. You asked me to come out for a drink, then you wanted to make out afterwards, and I was like, no. <laughs> Cause you fucking. You're like, He's no, like, I, I don't. You here at you're two like, a.m. I don't kiss on the mouth. <laughs> He's like, you here at two a.m. motherfucker. <laughs> it's like Louis. I thought we were friends. But so and I don't date Puerto Ricans. <laughs> but comedy, at least dudes. I don't put Puerto, Puerto Rican dudes. Comedy is <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate fucking pickup because you're on stage. And I, I remember Unless the first time. Unless you have time, a vagina, it's I, not a pickup of you. Well, right. Guys still think that's hot. They 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 do. Guys, it's a certain type of guy. It's got to be more of a masochistic type. Oh, you know, shut up! You can give some of that pussy away any day of the yeah. week. Yeah, you so can the, give it away. You, you don't, don't need to put a up. sign up. Mark yeah, could fuck anybody in the room right now. Mark could go. Um, they were like, "Oh, you giving away pussy?" Oh, she said. Was um so, but, <laughs> but, um, but does anybody? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on stage, there's like a pheromones that comes off that women are really, really attracted. I remember when I uh, first when I first started spell pheromones. P H. Pheromones. P H. 
Erm. <laughs> I remember I saw, uh, you, you remember, dude, Ozzy what? Baez. Do you remember from uh, yes, yes, yes. New York Comedy Club? Yes, he was guy, awful. He was, he was awful, and he was, but he was an animal, dude. We would do blow up in his fucking apartment. He lived he right above the New York animal. Comedy Club, and he would fuck these young chicks. And I remember the first time they brought him up on stage, they were like, he was in, I forget what the movie was, but it was a Sylvester Stallone movie. They were like, oh, you're going to recognize this guy from HBO in this movie. And he probably wasn't even in the movie. He probably wasn't even an extra. It was just it. some shit. But I remember being in the audience, going, even though he stunk at comedy, even uh, you got, he died, God rest his soul. But even remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember going like, "Oh man, that's pretty fucking awesome." There was a separation there between him being on stage and I'm a fucking peon, normal fucking You're a guy muggle. who doesn't go on stage. Well, exactly. because and this is what I tell a lot of dudes. I get a lot of comics who have chick problems, have problems getting girls, and I said, "You, you what you don't understand is." You uh you are putting yourself under judgment when you step on this. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Louis Gomez. You are putting Louis yourself. Jay Gomez. I'm not doing your fucking J, so <laughs> fuck that. I'm not doing the fucking J. Or you, you either get J or straight. J, yeah. I'm going to just call you J. Call me J. All right, all right, J. I need the so J. Nobody's going to know. In about five minutes, it's going to stand for jerk off. And you don't... <laughs> so it, the, when they bring you up on stage, you're basically saying, I'm putting myself under judgment for the whole time that from the second you step on stage, you're under judgment. Now, this is uh, this is a little technical. I'm going to get a little technical about uh, the whole idea of peacocking. People people who know P, uh, pickup artist stuff. Pe- peacocking is where you wear an article of clothing or or you're me. Whatever. <laughs> well, no, that I also includes pe- articles of clothing. Right. I am a peacock. It's so a conversation the, piece. Right. It's uh, something that makes something that the, stands out to the point the where people have to notice. But the reason why the reason why why that's attractive to women is the, the dynamic behind it is this: because you put yourself by wearing something. Or if you wear a furry hat, right? Mm. You you're going into the 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 confines of other men, right? And other men, because you have wore something outrageous, are gonna. You're going into this this den of men, knowing that men are gonna put pressure on you. They're gonna give you unwanted pressure because you're different, because you stand out. Now, it's attractive to women because they're you're stepping in the room, knowing that you're taking on unwanted pressure. Knowing that that's the case, which says uh, which says something about your particular your particular confidence in the first place, because you're going, I'm walking in the den of men, knowing that I'm different and I'm gonna get pressure, from them and I don't give a fuck what they think. You you weather the storm of the pressure from uh, the, the peer pressure and of other men, cower. and you're you don't cowering. cower. Then women go, this guy's an alpha male. That's what you're doing. Right. So in the context of comedy, everybody else there is there to see a comic. You're the comic. You're the one that's putting yourself under this unwanted pressure. You don't, we could not do this. The, the, it's all comics here. You could not do this. You could say tomorrow, I don't want to go up and have people, uh, 165, 150 strangers judge me on everything that come out of my mouth. It comes out of my mouth every second of the time that I'm on stage. And that in itself is what's attractive. But right. once you, when you, when you, when you weathered that storm, and you go out and you go, yeah, okay. Say, for instance, you have a blue fur coat. Just hypothetically. Yeah. You walk in, man, people And blue go, gators. And, yeah, Matching well, you got blue a mess. gators. <laughs> you got hypothetically a, speaking. Hypothetically. Oh, he's not a barbarian for and Christ's blue, sakes. And, and a blue watch. Man, has to look like a gentleman. Hypothetically speaking. Yeah, big face. Uh, <laughs> 58 millimeters, no less than 58 So... You walk in and dudes go, and this is and and this is what's funny. I was I was talking to somebody about this. Guys who know me, they've known me for ten years, and still when I wear my blue fur, they go, oh, uh, it's almost they can't not say something. It's once they it registers to them that oh, it's Dante. I mean, why? Of course, they go in their head, but the initial instinctual drive of men, that kind of masculine banter that kind of masculine uh play that male play but the pecking order is to fucking give me a to give me shit i think especially when you're hanging out with comics um yeah but you know what it's also it's like we make fun of when we make fun of each other we make fun of things that are very insider and very specific not something that are are, that's necessarily overt you know what i mean we don't we don't make fun of each other 
easily. You know what I'm saying? So to 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 so if I got a three thousand dollar coat on, and I walk up, it, there's really nothing you can say about it. You can say whatever you want, but but initially the masculine instinctual drive is for you to give me shit. So even dudes that know that they're giving me shit, they give me shit, and then they go, oh yeah, it's Dante, and it kind of then on a conscious level it registers. Of course, here's what for. And then they, then they go, oh, let me try it on. And like I, they're verbally <laughs> puffing their chest up, trying to. Become. And it, you can't not do it. Right. It's just, and this is the thing it's we were fundamental too, wiring. Right. It's 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 this is this is thousands and thousands of years of of evolution. This is why we survive as a species is because, as men, we puff our chests out and we we battle, for the for the penis. And then we fuck bitches and make babies and we keep going. You gotta make babies. And fuck, you gotta puff fuck up bitches. though. But you can't, and, mm. and this is why women are attracted to the motherfuckers that puff up. And the ones that don't puff up, they don't get no penis. They got to stay home and watch a bitch dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, 2 Chain. Thank you, 2 Chain. <laughs> and, and I think that this is, and, and this is what's funny. We were listening to one of the shows we listened, we watched this uh, YouTube clip, and this feminist chick was like, women, women are, you know, women, can, they can choose their own roles, and they shut the fuck up. You fucking condescending bitch. Fuck you. The bottom line is that there's you, you the feminist move the feminist movement is 60, 70 years old. We have been as human, there's been uh, homo sapiens, human beings have been on this earth for two hundred thousand years. That this the DNA, the instinctual instinctual bed, the drives that we have that is that's made us survive as a as a species is two hundred thousand years old. And all of a sudden now, because we've intellectualized past that, or in terms of the social contract, now none of that matters. It's absurd. I love feminism. The way it's going, like in the beginning, it was all about fucking giving women rights to vote and fucking drive and do whatever the fuck else they wanted to do. Sure. But now, now it literally, like women's liberation has become like, our, we just get as slutty as possible, and that's us being liberated. Yeah. So it's fucking women taking their titties out in parks. It's women fucking showing their asshole meat. They're like, hey, look, I'm a fucking feminist. <laughs> look at my asshole meat. I, wish, I love this, it. This, this sounds this. like an oral project for a community college <laughs> about <laughs> feminism in front of a class. Listen, I know no what I'm more talking about, dude. Shaming. <laughs> that's not slut shaming, dude. It's fucking no, feminism I mean, that's, shaming. It, they're, they're talking about slut shaming. It's what is, what is slut shaming? Slut shaming is that women can be sexually as free as men. And not be called sluts or whores. Hold on, men no are fucking shamed for that. Okay, men are not. Hold on, shamed. Josh Ricardo can't walk into his fucking house at Thanksgiving. And go, hey, dude, <laughs> I have a sex addiction. I fucked 250 women, and people are gonna be like, hey, it's fucking. I'm gonna go help, that dude. numbers higher. I'm gonna go that numbers Man, higher. It's probably <laughs> higher, but it's like, dude, you need some fucking help. We, you know, his family's gonna be worried about him. It's not. They this, should be. The, the, we yeah, need to help. You, Nineteen-year-old fucking kids in college are gonna high-five each other, but that's not the world that I live in or that you live in. So men are slut shamed. That's women a good are point, Louis J. Gomez. Boom! I'm back. Bam! Baby. <laughs> I think a whole society like it's the sexual energy sexual power is is a scary thing in a society that has was until maybe the invention of the pill right like because sex means problems sure property rights are gonna get fucked up you know whose kid is it who inherits like our whole structure of our society was this sex thing's got to be locked the fuck down. Sure. You're only, saying because only allowed to do it with one person forever, and that's and it's a political thing. Or so you just, you think that that was bec it was a, it was, eh, dude? That's not really true. I mean, if you go even if look, you talk about biblically, that's the conversation that's happening at sure. the top of people's heads. Okay. Uh, below the belt line, people are fucking like crazy. Exactly. But the shame is there. The whole society is like yeah. we have to govern this. We have to pretend it's not. There, we have to pretend that you can control it. It's really easy. Yeah, you know what? Now that I got a kid, I look at that. It's like, no, I don't want my kid to go fuck 250 chicks. Uh, it's not going to be cool. I'm not going to high five my son if he does that. I want my kid to fucking find happiness and, and to fall in love lying. with somebody. If, no, you, not, if your I son smashes 250 pussies, you're not going to be like. He's going to. He's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> This is no stopping and it. And you know man. what his cock looks like, so you know for sure. Yeah, it's not like circumcised yeah. either. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, I look, I. I don't know, man. I just don't see that the whole idea of sludge game. It's just women. The women always cry double standard, and women. It's like we deal with the same scrutinization from 
women way more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? Let me tell you some guy. Let me tell you some guys don't really slut shame. It's maybe behind closed doors, like oh you fuck that chick is fine, dude. Guys are constantly trying to get the puss. So typically, guys aren't really dicks to women. Typically, in the back of our mind, even if we don't like a chick, we don't want to be too mean to her because she might fuck us. There's a, a little thing in our and mind. There is why you don't get fucked, right, Josh Ricardo? This is why men. Uh, this is why men slut shame. I'll tell you why. It's because it, you make us look bad in front of our girlfriends, and they'll come like, after we have the conversation. We have we go home, and the girlfriend goes, "Do you want to fuck people in bars like Darren?" Yeah, dude. And, women and, are the ones slut shaming. Exactly on both sides. Exactly. Uh, well, here's but here's sides. the thing. Here, yeah, Josh is laughing because he knows what I'm gonna say. Okay. If your girl asks you that, and you say, "Fuck yeah, I want to fuck girls in the bar," you quit. <laughs> guess what? The conversation is over. She may bitch about it, but if you're honest about it, of course. I'm doing this for you. My fidelity is for you. It's a gift to you. Don't forget it. Be a better bitch. Do you want an honor it is <laughs> that I don't go out and fuck other people? Do you like, really want me? Yeah. I'm doing it. Doesn't yeah. mean I don't want to. I want to do it. I'm doing it for you. This is a Look, gift. And the truth is, we are fucking other women. We're just not telling you, and that's the gift. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Thank then God. Don't tell Thank us. God for that. I'm just kidding, B. If anybody sends <laughs> this uh, podcast episode, the joke. Ha 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 ha. Why haven't you uh, cheated on B like you've cheated on everyone else? I, I mean, the, well, the baby is definitely like, uh, like now it's a cheating on the breaker. family. <laughs> now it's cheating on the family. Now yeah, but it's not. You've been with her for four and a half years. But she's also a much different type of chick. She she challenged me in a much different way than any of the other girls challenged me. She made me like most girls. I always dated younger girls who were into the idea of me being a comic, and they kind of looked up to me in a weird way. And B thinks you're a piece of shit. Right. She <laughs> wants. She's a fucking like very intellectual, smart. A uh, beautiful girl who has a lot going for her, and she likes to fix things. She's like, a, she she knows I'm broken, so she wants to fix me. <laughs> but um, with her, it was almost like I was trying to make myself better and be a better guy. And there was another girl in high school that I dated that I, I really liked. Um, and you like, you know, I was failing out of high school, and because I started dating her, I wanted she wanted me to go to prom. I had a pass to go to prom, so I fucking um, I like got my shit together because she was just a chick who I would, like who made me want to be a better person. I think that's important. When you when you're finding another this chick, this is so awful. Shut the fuck. I don't you're think you know. Awful. It's not all women are bitches in the kitchen, bro. Nobody said that. Some women are nice, said. good creatures. Let me explain something. Not you, Mara. Let, let me explain. <laughs> there's good women out there. <laughs> you know, he always keeps a little bat just to I swing know. at you. <laughs> you're fucking. You surround yourself with wretched whores. <laughs> you know what? Let me let me explain something. Not to you. wretched. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're going too far with that. <laughs> Listen, here's here's look. Be a fucking man, Louis J. Gomez. Thank you. For no the girl job. is supposed to fucking make you who you are. You're supposed to make you who. Be a fucking no, man. No, they're not making you who you are. But the, it is, in, I think, in any relationship, whether you, it's a fucking girlfriend, uh, a fucking friend, just friends in general. You've heard "cut the dead weight" from your life before. You need to surround yourself with people we that call are it making taking you. the L, but yes. You want to you want to surround yourself with the people that are going to make you want to be better. Listen to this. I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this. Stark. It's my girlfriend being raped. What are you doing, Dante? My ghost no, is that's true. not it. Forget it. <laughs> is it? I can't, it's hard for me to say. It tells where the God, and the Godfather when he goes, be a fucking man. <laughs> you can act like a man. <laughs> you ain't a man. You? What are you? You cry like a like, what? Come in across both of California for you. Come in and cry like a woman. <laughs> Please, one time with your family, you fucking hobo. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's the point, Louis. This is this is your and I'm and this is and I love you, Lou. But here's the thing, Louis J. Gomez. I you can, do not let a woman define you. This is my problem. Every t- I've been on podcasts with you before, and every time you talk, this you don't smoke weed because you don't want her to know you smoke. That's weed. That's not true. I, dude, I am not good on marijuana. I'm not. That is a fact. And uh, here's the, my problem: I let her know that I truly believe that. And that was my mistake. If I just let her know, in her mind, for me, it's not an issue. Because I let her know that it's a problem for me and I realize that, she's clinging on to that so it creates conflict in our relationship. But, truthfully speaking, dude, if I just wanted, if I came home and smoked a bong every night before we went to bed, she wouldn't give a fuck, dude. She knows that I smoke pot all day, every day when I'm smoking pot. And it's a problem. It's not good. <laughs> but, oh, so, so what is the, I don't understand what the argument is. It's not even an argument. I, I, you think when I He's say I'm not addiction. smoking pot, I have an addiction. He exactly. has an addiction to it, and um, and 
<laughs> yeah, I yeah, know, Josh. I'm an asshole. Yeah, yeah. I know, Josh. It's the same thing with sex with me. I'm Listen, jerking off all day. Josh I'm and Cotto, sexting people. But the marijuana thing, we can. That's that's legitimate. It's real shit. substance. It's real. It's I'm, I'm not real. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with you, Josh and Cotto? You're making excuses for your career. <laughs> I got an addiction to weed. All right. <laughs> It's just that he, your addiction is a lot more pleasant to him than his addiction <laughs> of smoking pot. His addiction of smoking pot doesn't get his dick wet at all. So he's like, I don't see how this is good. Your thing is fantastic. Take the or leave the penis. I'm high. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, but here's what I'm You got to be who the fuck you are. And if your growth, your personal growth has to be your decision. It will never stick if it's not your decision. But where's the friendship? Like, you can't have friendship with people? I mean, it's surely you, it's your wife's, maybe, maybe oh, one no, of your no, friends. No, no, no. Okay. We're going to wow. get to your marriage what? in a minute. No, wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> should wait, wait, should we do Therapim first? Wait, I think that's no, why we... we... <laughs> Sorry, brother. Tommy just didn't know that you were sweeping with, sleep, swimming with the piranhas. That was just an opportunity for them to shit on you. So... <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, they, they just tasted the blood in the water. Oh, the dude. whole fucking crew. Even Mara called you a faggot. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, shit. Well, all right, all right. Hold on. So <coughs> the, the oh. point is that if you're going to clean yourself up, you, can't, you can get help from other people, but at the end it has to be you. No, it, it obviously is right. me, but she inspires something in me. She's, she doesn't inspire. She screams at you and yells at you, <laughs> and you not true. you cower around. That's not you true. You don't. You don't. She. Where did she find your weed in the fucking mailbox? She did find my weed in the you mailbox. You piece of shit. <laughs> it's like a child. Like you you're hiding the like weed in the mailbox. Yeah. The, look at your face. But can I tell you another thing? <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. A big part of it is because if I admitted to her that I was smoking pot. And then I fall back into that cycle. It's like, I remember, dude, I, I smoked cigarettes for a long time, and I, I, uh, I, I fell off the wagon a couple of years ago, and I, I remember I was smoking cigarettes, so it was kind of like bumming cigarettes here and there, and I didn't tell B, I didn't want to tell her, because I knew if I admitted it, then I'm just buying a pack a day, and I'm smoking again. And it's funny, as I bummed a cigarette from a stranger, I'm, I'm, I'm outside just walking down the street in Union Square, I was like, hey, buddy, let me, uh, let me, let me bum a cigarette. I take it, I go to light it, and just randomly, I'm in front of a restaurant, she happened to be sitting... <laughs> At my at my waist, I did it in front of her, like a foot and a half away from her. I bummed a cigarette from somebody, and she was sitting there, and I caught in my lie. Here's the problem: I'm also an idiot, so I constantly get <laughs> caught in my lies. She found my fucking weed in the mailbox. But why should you have to lie? Is what Dante's saying. Like, why are you hiding your weed? I don't. You? Have Did you put to in lie? that envelope that said "B, this is my weed"? <laughs> <laughs> With an fuck? arrow, or or the opposite, <laughs> not weed. Did I forget about, about the weed in the mailbox a few times? Where like the mailman comes and delivers mail with the weed, right? They never take it though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, do you understand that there's a problem? That's a problem. No, there is a problem. Yes, I know that's no, a problem. No, not just a problem. I'm not talking about your weed problem. I don't give a fuck about your weed problem. It's not an addiction, you homo. It's, look, you got to... Well, the problem I, The problem is that you're hiding it from your woman. I'm not hiding it now. I told her that I smoked last night. <laughs> so this is all... So this problem is all done as of yesterday. What time? How many hours ago? No, Shut no, the fuck solved. up. I've been better. <laughs> I've been better. It's all solved. Here's well, you know what? I, I haven't bad. been smoking Fine. during the day. I've been. I just been smoking. Do you understand? Total yeah. victories. Do, do you wake understand? up later? <laughs> okay. Here's the other and problem. Josh hasn't Dante. fucked a midget yeah. in three days. It's been a long time. Louis <laughs> Dante, Dante, you haven't given me any respect for that. Yeah. <laughs> We have to realize also it's probably not a good idea to hold this intervention while he's high at the moment <laughs> and can't really. I told you I don't smoke during the day. It's dark outside, okay? <laughs> That's a good point. I Harry. finished Thank smoking you. at 445. It's six now. Yeah, I'm, my it's bad. Fine. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, it, the fact is that you don't, that you're lying to yourself. That's the, the and, and I get it because, and this is why, this is why, like, you're lying to yourself for what purpose? For what purpose? You're doing what you want to do anyway. You are ultimately doing what you want to do, and you're making excuses. Well, for the, the lies end up creating more of a problem. This is what I've actually kind of caught wind of lately, and I'm, I'm kind of... It's better that I'm not lying. It's, it's way better that I'm not lying and telling her that I'm smoking than it is if I... Uh... You know what? This is time. It's, it's, it's yeah. time. This <laughs> Time for therapy. It is. Because we thought Tom was here for, for therapy. But you know what? I think we are going to jumble you into this fucking therapy. And we're going to leave Josh. 
to fuck all the midgets he wants to fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Josh you, is man. fucking fine. He doesn't have an addiction. Tom's apparently gay. <laughs> you can't help him. have an addiction. <laughs> Only man. Jesus can help Tom at this point. <laughs> Interventions are tough. I didn't yes. realize how tough this would be. Here's, here's a time you came down because Mara said you wanted to come down. You got some some chick problems. We were talking last night. Yes. Uh, he's married. Okay. Uh, and he doesn't have his balls. So uh, we need to get those back for him. We need to help ch- show him the got way. G- G-Y-B-B? Uh, I gave him some homework last night. Really, Mara? You I, gave homework? I gave, yes, I did. What homework did you give him? I said, I need you to come up with the top three things that we should work on. Okay. So here we go, Tom. How can we help you? Uh, well, I'm very happy to, to run these down. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So we're going to talk about uh, diet. Diet. It's a what diet you- thing. My wife is a uh, vegetarian. First of all, I've, uh, I've been with my wife. We've been together 10 years. Okay. Married for s- six of those. Happy right? for two months. Bingo. No. <laughs> uh, is she American? She is American. She's from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Quick we live question. here in New York. Would she listen to this podcast? Maybe. Maybe. Ah, oh, fuck. Never All right. Mind. All right. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll be honest. All right. Um, fine. So. It's always better when they don't, so we can just really you get know, to the <laughs> shit quick. But <laughs> All right. We'll start Don't be scared, Harry. We're going in. We met when right. I was uh, I was 21. She was 23. Okay. Um, and she was vegetarian. She's a real punk rock kind of old school hardcore oh, kids. so LSD and vegetarianism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Purple. yeah you want a picture? I want to get a visualization. Uh, I wouldn't do It'll that, take Tom. Too long, but yeah. But I wouldn't. When I first met her, she had like, you know, bright red hair, uh, like lots of piercings. That. It was great. Nice. Um, but I love it. So I became vegetarian to impress her and to get in her panties. Ah. It okay. happens, okay? Uh, it happens. It happens, it happens. Um, uh, and then at somewhere along the line, I was like, I don't want to eat like this anymore. But I would cheat on her with meat. Uh. <laughs> I'd, I'd eat. You know, Tom is gay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and when I say meat, I mean big, fat, hairy cocks. <laughs> <laughs> that was really the problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was like, I'm fine with that. As long as you leave that bacon alone. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so oh, that's a great way to sort of navigate it in because once you do that, she's not going to care about a meatball parm. Exactly. <laughs> but all right, I'm sorry. Well, you sucking cocks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, and then you know eventually it, it kind of came out and uh, it was a big mess. And now I eat meat in front of her and I eat meat out, but she has a hard rule: no meat in the house, which wow. is you know it's, it's our house. Why? Mm. Why not no meat in the house? She is repulsed by it. She just doesn't like it. She's it. disgusted by it. And uh, Yeah, I mean, look, I, I can't even, I'm not even going to hate it. If she's genuinely physically repulsed by it, that's a fi- it's not her being a cunt. That's her like being, hey, I'm going to be nauseous. There's a meat drawer that's, that's covered. You can just throw it in the meat drawer. Just don't open the fucking meat drawer. I mean, look. It, I, I, you know what? I kind of don't. That's his fault from the beginning as well. well. He yeah, fucked but up. That, 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 I mean. Beyond that. And here's a, let, let me go one step further. It's yeah. like, I, I want for my life, my, my body, I want to like do what uh, Lewis is doing, right? Because you're you're also a closet homosexual. Uh, you're <laughs> uh, <laughs> big oh, dudes. Not uh, you're not closet. you're not eating. Yeah, closet. Yeah, right. yeah closet. it's uh, um, it, the doors are wide open. <laughs> uh, He's more of like a He's guest room like, homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, like not eat not eat carbs and stuff like that. Like eat more of a He's more like a three Protein bedroom I mean. homosexual. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A foyer homosexual. A mezzanine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, so uh, I want to kind of eat like uh, no carbs and stuff and more protein, protein and stuff. And like just, right. Yeah, look better. And that's really hard to do as a vegetarian. Yeah. It's very, right. very difficult right. to do. So that's kind of my quan. That's why it's where I want to go. And the lady says no. So she's really shutting down a very big part of my life, which is this is what I want to do with my diet, you know? Okay. So uh, I'm right now. Uh, now, is she ris- literally physically repulsed by the side of me or is it? Is that really, is that an honest? Well, okay, wait, because anybody, that can be psychosomatic. Anyone can well, let trick him answer, let, him an, let him answer first, because he might just say, no, she's just giving me shit, and then we don't even <laughs> think. Well, even if, it, if she is or if she isn't, she could be, you know, if you tell yourself something seven times, you believe it. Fair so enough, but content. look. Mara wants to fuck me, Mara wants to fuck me, Mara wants to fuck me, Mara wants to fuck me. You can believe it, I have to say it. <laughs> Do, do you think that she's actually physically 
You see, you, you don't, even, you don't even have to answer it because well, you don't even have to answer it because you. It's where I don't think so. It's where preference meets, uh, you know, like involuntary response. Like her preference is not have it in the house. So you know, and it's a very. And she can do that, but you know, she can sit next to me and I'll eat a burger, and that's fine. And it's, it's it wasn't fine. initially, but she's now she's fine with it. You know? Yeah, because you didn't stop. That's really what happens. Is <laughs> yeah. that's how you make it fine? Is like, yeah, I'm doing this mm-hmm. regardless of whether you want this or not. This is happening. Sure. This is this is something that I I say to guys all the time. Is first of all, you like what you said was well, it's your fault in the first place. But listen, women have integrity, amnesia. Whatever they agree to in the beginning has nothing to do with what they agree to on on the, on the back end. <laughs> they change it and they go fuck. Well, I just feel different. I feel different, and then you're supposed to accept that. We are yeah. the ones that go, well, I did agree to this, and I, I decided that I would just destroy my life and be unhappy f- with her for the rest of my life, so I guess I need to stay there. We do that. Women don't do that. The, woman, the minute your woman finds you unattractive, and I've been, I've been big on this for the last couple of shows, yeah. it's, it's, been, it's been a thing, because the minute she finds you unattractive and emotionally she's not gonna, she dumps you. She has no loyalty to the fact that you've been together 10 years. She just goes, emotionally, I'm not here. Um, I can't do this anymore. And then she's repulsed by you because she doesn't find you attractive. Does everyone cry on this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to. It, it, and, that's, and that's what happens because that's how women are, because of the fact that they need to be emotionally connected to their mate. And if they're not emotionally connected to their mate, that's a problem. Now, here's let's talk about what specifically makes a woman emotionally connected to um, her mate. Number one, Maru t- uh, testified is safety. Yeah. She wants to feel safe. Feel that. But, I think that's one of the probably the number one deep down instinctual things with women. But here's mm-hmm. here's the crazy thing about that: if you cannot stand up to your wife, how are you going to stand up to me? Well. I'll punch my chick in the face, but I'll punch you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, my, but my point being is, is if you if she can submit you, if she's submitting you, she's putting you in a rear naked hole for what? First of all, she got terrible top game. <laughs> she can, she can, yeah, her half honestly, guard is poor. I mean, really not very good with the ground game in general. <laughs> but striking, though. I'm striking having a difficult time connecting with this analogy. <laughs> She's testing him. So what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm, and, and it may not be a direct, it may not be a conscious test, but you have to understand it's something. The reason why a woman finds you attractive is because you're a strong male who can keep her safe. Which, by the way, that's almost like, I think that's why women are so attracted to a sense of humor, because a, a sense of humor is like a sign of intelligence. You know what I'm saying? It's only, like they, they equate that to intelligence. They equate that to somebody who Here's can what a woman is attracted to, the fact that you don't give a fuck about her. And I know that sounds weird. But the fact that you're not, you're not, and you, you, here's what a well, woman does. It's almost like, like you have that in common. You're like, oh, you don't give a fuck about me? I don't either. Me I don't neither. give that a fuck about myself. So much in <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> because when, if you get a, here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a quick way to lose your chick. Are you, are you okay? Are you doing? Are you I just became dice yeah. on that one. I was like, quick, 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 here's a quick way to lose your chick. Do a dice impression. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, are you, Hi, honey. Are you, are you, are you Okay. Oh, yeah, Dice, how come you're always <laughs> caring about me? <laughs> Shut up, you cunt. <laughs> you, you cannot be in a situation where you love her more than she loves herself. She don't like herself. Women mm. don't like their stomach. They don't like their arm fat. They don't like their thighs. There's so many things they don't like about If you think she's perfect, she's just going to go, you fuck up. Oh, you suck. <laughs> You're right about that. You're, it's amazing how uh, the difference. Here's an analogy. If you ask your lady, do you want some, can I make you some tea and toast? Would that make you feel better? Well, and that's, then you, that's a hilariously English thing to offer to make your drink. <laughs> of course. Would you like some English tea and crumpets? <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I do. And, and, and then I get a throne and I put her on it. And then I make money with her face on it. <laughs> Oh, shit, but, that's hilarious. And, and then he goes in fast motion, but <laughs> all right, I digress. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but so if you ask, and then and then she says yes, and you make it, not nearly as good a response as if you just fucking make it. Make it. Hey, exactly. baby, you need this. Right. Unbelievable. Just fireworks. You're amazing. She, she wants to know that you know how to take care of her needs without being told. And most of the time, a woman doesn't know what the fuck she wants anyway. <laughs> 
That's yeah, a, I know that's uncomfortable. Don't. Not really in the pimp cup. That's not uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Harry used to cringe when I used to say stuff like that. Bitches don't know shit. And he he'd be like, "Well, what we mean is." Yeah. Now he just kind of sits with yeah. it. Just sits right in there. Because the reality is, that a woman down. doesn't know what she wants. Her pussy does. She doesn't know what her pussy. She don't know what she Which likes. Which is really hard when you're trying to pick a restaurant. Because if you're leaving <laughs> it up to the pussy, they just could be a while. She's like, I want Vagisil. So, Tom, so you are allowed to eat burgers. In front of her, but she doesn't want any of the meat in the house. It's Correct. Bullshit. So Correct. it's just another so, obstacle to create because he, she, he clearly was like, well, I'm eating meat. Uh, originally, he was like, you can't eat meat. And he's like, well, yeah, uh, yeah. eventually it became, well, I'm gone. So you, lo- you love your wife. Yeah. Of course. You want to stay with her. Yeah. But you also want to be able to get in shape on your own and eat what you want. And 100%. Just live. It just comes like down to doing being, what you yeah. actually want no, to it's do. No, is it a health thing to you? Like, you want to be healthier. And I, I don't, she would, let me, let, me, let me set up a scenario. You fucking come home. You got some steaks in the freezer, some chicken in the fucking fridge. What's going to happen? She comes home from work, and she sees that. Same fridge. thing's going to happen if you come home smoking weed. Motherfucker. Smoking fucking weed. She'll take the it on same, the chin. Same. She'll take it on the chin. Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> if you come home, fucking roll up a flatty. Same thing. Nothing. A flatty? She's going she's gonna to uh, bitch. Dante and, stopped and, doing drugs in the 40s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be some combination <laughs> of <laughs> yeah. We I did opium. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why he was asking me to get back on the horse? I didn't know what he was fucking talking about. She would flip out. Of course, and Dante is wearing an incredible zoot suit. I just yes. want to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, looks yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, you know, some combination of you know the now tears, you're the silent, me <laughs> <laughs> tears, silent treatment, the freeze out. You, you know, know the all old, the tricks the, the old that you standards. hate. You know, those yeah. exactly. Yeah. So a discussion what happens, before him. What happens when you don't give a fuck about that? Like I'm eating meat. You can fucking not talk. Are you from oh, Mars? Oh. Are you from another planet? Like I, I don't even know how to he not never give gets a fuck that about far. that. Like, That's ever. Just, those are just manipulation but tactics. But do, do you understand that you? you do I you know. Understand it? Okay. I need you to okay. teach me. Okay. This is a one-way right. street because I don't let know what I'm doing. Let me explain something. The reason why you're concerned about these little things and you and you you give a fuck is because you don't really understand what your value is. That's what it is. You you're a good guy to your wife. Yes. This guy's blowing my mind. Yes, you you yeah. take care. I am. You yes. take care of your wife. Of yes, course. you love her. Of yes. course. I'm when sorry. You, I'm watching you... this, and it looks like you know when you're doing a magic trick, and like David <laughs> plays. Ma- that's incredible. Uh-huh. That yeah. is amazing. Where did you put that quarter? Okay, <laughs> yeah. it's in your ass. <laughs> Please continue to blame me. <laughs> right. So here's the, so so you take good care of her. Yes. Yeah. You make love to her. Do you like to please her? Or yeah. you, just, you, just, you just fucking jerk off of Joe and fucking <laughs> just shut the fuck up. It's the her show. Okay, when it comes to when it comes to, to financially, you, you work, yes? Yes. Pay yeah, the yeah. bills, yes. Yes, I pay I pay at least half of the bills. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. But you go out, when you take her out, do you pay? Sometimes. Mom, sometimes not. But you love her, sure. you're together, your relationship is much deeper than just me, yes? Yes. So my question is, why do you allow that meat? If if meat is the, if she, meat is not a deal breaker in this relationship. If meat is a deal breaker in this relationship, you ain't got no relationship. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Like it's you want to eat meat. You want to look. Did she know Clearly, you, you don't have muscle tone that you need. You need protein. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you gotta have some protein. Hey, look, if I'm gonna do well in these gay clubs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy's stomach, you need to slim yeah. down. You his can't. stomach skin is transparent. <laughs> yeah. I can see his organs. He needs protein. Uh, you ever been to a black you have an discotheque? Ulcer. You have an ulcer, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have a small. You've, ulcer. You've, you've expressed this there. Like, I, hey, I really want to change my diet. I'm, I'm, I want to get healthy. Of course, and it's been a while since we've kind of had the talk, but the 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 D word deal breaker has been used in the past about meat consumption. She's like, I, if I had known that you were this carnivore when I met you, I wouldn't have been with you. Too bad. Oh, but if bad, you guys yeah. had a baby, if she I, wouldn't. How about this? If I had known you were the cunt that you are, I would have the deal would have been broke. Do you understand that this? Dude, is, this I, you is, know he has like an old old school British mentality. He's like, you you cannot disrespect my woman like that. Now I must challenge you to a duel. <laughs> just fucking just beat the shit out of my Dante. I I, 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 I want a bronze medal in fencing. Stop playing. I will fuck. I know you, you actually did. <laughs> I want a bronze medal in fencing. So stop playing. Um, my point is. If you if you're with this woman ten years and she loves you and you love her, meat is not the deal breaker. All, all me all in fact, as much as you as much as you think it's a deal breaker, it's the thing the fact that you submit to this makes you less attractive to her. And me. <laughs> <laughs> Standing up to her is always gonna make her make you more attractive. I think you just I think what we're talking about is being reasonable. 
Look, this is your choice. This is your body. This is your choice. And I totally understand that. And I respect that. But this is my choice. And I'm willing to make all the kind of, uh, you know, arrangements around that her feelings you know, arrangements? you know like uh you know like i would say well if i'll keep a like a different fridge for, for example if, you know if you really don't like opening that door and seeing it all right we'll have we'll, there's there's fudging it you yes. know you can fudge it right. compromise well, because yeah. because if you're saying and, and it's not fudging it's, it's being reasonable and being compromised mm -hmm. but that's my point my point is you're willing to be reasonable and she's not that's a very good point do you understand Absolutely, that yeah. you do understand she's going fuck your reason you ain't eating meat pussy that's what she's saying. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now the question is, what are you going to do about that? Go home and hit her. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson you take out of this show today. I'll just no. go for one of my long walks in <laughs> Central Park. <laughs> you could do after that. After dark. Yeah. And, you know, meet some men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if we can find a solution in between both those things. No. If you guys had kids, would she? Would your kid be a, a vegetarian? Uh, yes, and I'm fine with that because the kid. That's weird though. Dude. No, but the kid can make its own. You know, the kid. I think the kid should make his own choice to not eat meat later in life because we're we are carnivores and we do eat meat. We well, you know that she doesn't agree with that, and that's fine. She's, I mean, I mean, she's wrong about that. She knows that she's wrong. Like we're we're meant to eat meat, right? Does she drink? Yes. Okay, so now what if you... We're not supposed to drink alcohol, oh, what if, but we are supposed to eat meat. That's it, the truth. It, it, do you, do you, I mean, do you understand how absurd this is? Like, what if you yeah. What if you were an alcoholic and you had, and you got clean? And you go, like, I don't want any alcohol in the house. And she was like, well, fuck that, I'm drinking, right? What, then it was, And then you'd be like, oh, uh, and she might... So she, then she'd drink around you or whatever the fuck. Or what if you were a sex addict? And you didn't want to have sex. <laughs> it's like, do you understand? I was talking about a real sex addict, not Joshua Carter's <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, yeah. which apparently is a real little exists. Arms. I'm never going to introduce her to Josh because <laughs> she <laughs> is a midget with a withered arm. <laughs> this, this, do you have to which arm, though? Which mouth. arm? Which arm? I'm talking about your meat problem. <laughs> if <laughs> you, it's already hit a lefty. Yeah. You're you, not you do have that to. Here's what you have to understand: is, is, is ask yourself if you're honestly being reasonable. If you're being reasonable, if you're willing, even if you're willing, like if you're willing, I wouldn't even put, a, put another fridge. Like I'm putting my motherfucker, I pay for the last. You put it on top of the I salad. I put it right. Listen, I would <laughs> mix my bacon in with her broccoli. But we That's know what, what you would do. Right. Your personality is very different from his. Yes. I think his way is a he's trying to compromise. He's he just has to which do is it reason, now. But you have to do it. And you need to understand by not doing it, you're less attractive to her. As mm. much as she's gonna bitch, and it's gonna be a problem where she's you're gonna get the sun. Listen, you, you here's what I, here's what you say. So so, ten years of us loving each other, is is negated by the fact that I want to add protein to my diet. That's what you're you go. That's I, I mean logic always helps. That's so that's what you're saying. So so our marriage is gonna be shot. Because I want to add protein to my diet. That's okay. what you okay. Did then she know you, you lied to her when you first started dating? You you admitted that after you were married that you were actually weren't vegetarian. You did it to. Uh, I was vegetarian her. for like so of the ten years. I think I was vegetarian for like four of them. But you didn't want to. You did it for her, right? When you met her, I thought that at the, the story. beginning I was so crazy. If she'd been a Nazi, I would have been. Oh, yes, okay. let's put him in the oven. And she yeah. knows <laughs> like, like you know, I was so crazy about it. Lewis her. does she, that anyway. <laughs> he does that. He's not so even let's, a Nazi. Let's get past the meat thing because there were some other issues expressed, and I don't want to run out of time before oh, we get sure. to those because we've already. Beaten that uh, to death. There's so many far. ways I'm a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many ways you could help. Told you to kick over a bowl of couscous or whatever. But let's move on to. <laughs> All right. What are some of the other issues? All right. My wife <laughs> is the like is the coolest chick I've ever met. She's so. Clearly you're wrong. Dante, Dante, like just let him. Don't have clearly, to make. I was gonna say wrong. Dante, just let him get it out <laughs> <All right>. before <laughs> we. She's really cool. She uh she like runs this vintage clothing warehouse. She sells vintage clothes to vintage clothes stores. Like okay. she's like the you know the pimp of the game of the, okay. uh, the vintage okay. game. Um, successful. He's trying, to, he's trying to relate to you. Very, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> she is da bomb. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, I okay. got the, the, Now I understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she she just started out on her own. She used to work for other people, and then she's got a small business. Okay. Uh, so she's successful. Exactly. Well, she's going to be successful, but right now is that shaky fuss year of Whatever. the business, She's right? chasing the dreams. So she's a bum bitch. It. We get she's it. Not, words, no. Right now she's a bum bitch. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, what does that mean? But, but Can that, I get the Dante, I'm going to actually listen. have to challenge you to a deal. <laughs> Let me explain what that means. That means she is, you're, being a bum bitch is where you would be, what she would call you if you were in the position that she was in. In a in a budding business that's not but successful I think, he is, I think he is a bum bitch in comedy. I've never heard of him. The, this, <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I'm, you I, work I two play, clubs. You I have work. To <laughs> those two clubs. You only work LOL and Beatrice <laughs> books That's it. That's not true. <laughs> and, and I, I only work uh, Chelsea and Fire Island. So, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gay. Uh, he's catching on. He's yes anding. Uh, <laughs> I like him. Ant knows him. Okay, okay. okay. Let's, let's quit so, around and help. So us Mario Cantone knows him. So right now she needs she needs help. And, uh, you know, and often that because it's a warehouse, that's physical help. That's moving large, heavy shit Fair around, enough. you know. Sure, and yeah. um, and uh, right now her margins. Are you are also financially supporting her? No. Okay. Uh, like in this sense, in that my labor is free and she could be paying someone to do the labor for her. Oh, right. She's making you lift her boxes? A lot w of the time, not making. Um, without any protein. Uh, without, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, oh. You're lifting boxes on broccoli. Wow. How the fuck do you need to do that? <laughs> You have no muscle endurance because you're not having enough protein in your life. That's also another way to go by. Just lay down by the boxes and go, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I can't go on. I can't do this on just legumes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so you're doing the labor for free, so, so. and we fight about it because uh, like sometimes That's actually legumes. Okay, I just pardon wanted me. to uh, correct the pronunciation of an English dude. That Thank was a, I just wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to do that. Tick. Yeah. <laughs> Achievement. So check that off. Life goal done. <laughs> uh, so you know we fight about it a lot because it, sometimes it's like you know I had a plan for today and lifting boxes for three hours. I'm gonna be fucking honest. It wasn't wasn't on the list. Right. You know and uh, you know. Uh, and it just c we fight about it a lot, and it's I feel like I'm you never feel like you're put in that position where you've m slightly been like just cornered, like maybe not not blackmailed exactly, but like yeah, but you're right, you like emotional blackmail. So, let me say this, let me say this. I don't want to say blackmail. That's too much. She's not saying lift this box or you don't get to fuck me. No, I mean, but she's put you in the corner. She knows who bit. you are, and she knows how to manipulate you into the situation. She's also not being considerate also, of you as a person and your also schedule. Which also doesn't make her really a cool chick, like you said. You understand what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah. Like in the scope of the world, but not in the scope in their relationship. Like you're saying, you're saying all these things. This is a cool chick. She, so this is a cool chick who doesn't want you to eat the way that you want. She wants to dictate the way you want to eat. She doesn't respect your time, um, because she has an endeavor which is selfish. And, and unappreciative. I don't know if it's that that's necessarily that it it's selfish. Is. It might be that she's taking it for granted for sure. I'm and that taking there, somebody for granted is selfish. It is selfish. But you may not be doing it on purpose. You understand? Doesn't I can't matter immediately. If it's, listen, I didn't say malicious. Now, well, if I say she's malicious, then you can say she's selfish on purpose. I didn't say that. She's she's unappreciative to his time. That's not fair. She is very appreciative, very grateful. Yeah. She is not appreciative Dude, she's a bum bitch i'm <laughs> telling you no she's not appreciative to your time if she would she she would take it into consideration before she asked you to instead of cornering you these are, see you got to understand the the interesting thing about this is when you get when when you're a battered husband right <laughs> this is this is what you you make excuses for the things that you but your gut feeling what you the first thing that you said was cornered because that's how you feel the honest, your honest response was cornered, right? Right, yeah. Why is that your, why was that the first thing that came out of your mouth? I guess it's because you just, you're in a position where you don't feel Because like, you feel cornered. It's hard to say, yeah, I want to spend like three hours writing jokes at a coffee shop rather than lift jokes. Because I guess I don't have that self-esteem to say, you know, that writing jokes is important, I but guess. You don't want to piss her off, hey, essentially. Let me, let me, let me yeah. ask you something. You think maybe, like, you know, people are attracted to certain personalities. I know I am. I know everyone here is attracted to a certain personality. Maybe she's attracted to that personality that became vegetarian because she was vegetarian or lifts boxes because she says— Do you really says, think that, Josh? Well, I think that sh people— I'm attracted to people that mesh with kind of the way I want to dictate things. I'm, I'm not saying yeah, that's it's different. right or wrong. I'm just saying that maybe— It's different. Let me tell you why. Because you're not a chick— and that's the difference. Oh, wow. a, a woman doesn't want you, doesn't want you to love her more than she loves herself. I completely agree. And so what? Now I'm not saying that she's not she's she loves him, and she's comfortable with it. But if a dude comes down and says, "Look, I'm, uh, you don't tell me what to eat," she could suck him. She could blow him off. Like, do you, do you understand that if you're not the guy that she needs you to be, she'll find the guy who you she needs to be. Can we? I'm sorry. Now, I mean, she may not be. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I want to get to the third thing because we're going to run out okay. of time here and might as well wrap it up because I, I feel like it might be the same the way you're going. It's all going to come through the same. Because it, goal, is the, it, is. it is the same thing. It is. So I want to get to the third thing just so we have that before we run out of time. And then go ahead. 
you can and continue the, beating okay, so, the shit out of him. Well, I'm, not, I'm really not beating the shit out of him because what you have to understand is you're a good dude. I can tell you're a good dude. The simple fact that you're making excuses for all of the horse shit that she's doing to you is mm. is, is you're a good True. dude. The fact that you're making excuses for her selfishness, her unappreciative, the fact that she <laughs> corners you, the fact that she's dictating what your what your dietary needs should be. Like who the fuck does that? You know, what? I just realized what you're doing, uh, which is the pro- which is why you're doing and why you're being so aggressive. Because you have to be the attorney for the other side of his conscience, because he's already it's, created he's a already case. beaten. He's, he's already, already created a and case, he's and he's fighting yeah. me. Yeah, trying to make me that's convince why. me God that she's Dante. good to him, yeah, and she's not good to, to him. This was thirty years ago. You'd be a lawyer on guy court. <laughs> 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 because you'd be 30 oh, years younger. Beautiful. Yeah. Jesus. It took me a second, but that's, that was good. that's mean, but funny. <laughs> that was good. And you still I, wouldn't. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you'd still be at LOL, is what Dante is saying. <laughs> Me and right. you weed in the mailbox. Then shut up. I, okay. app- I, appreciate, I appreciate what you're saying. And so, you're coming from a very kind of black and white place. It is black and white. Yeah. Get to the third thing. I think the, the third thing. This is what's good is that this the third thing is such a step down. It's kind of really minor. Like now thinking about it, I no, bet you Dante, it's not. Yeah, I bet will, you it's yeah. not. Right, go for it. She kills Chinese people. Yeah. <laughs> and Dante's like, I don't have a problem with that. As long as she's not fucking with your time, she could kill as many Asians as she well, wants. Well, she does it on her time. Yeah. And if she as she wants you to help kill Chinese yeah. people, at least ask you in advance yeah. if you would help her. So you can uh-huh. schedule. But otherwise, kill as many delivery guys as you please. <laughs> Uh, so what is the third thing? The third thing we we fight about space in our in our apartment. I think a lot of people do that in New York, maybe. But um, I, I I feel like uh, when it comes to e- her getting rid of anything, it's like ab- absolutely not. You know, all her stuff. Like in terms oh, of space, she, she mostly she deals did. vintage goods. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you picked the wrong chick. Let me say, I used to say, I mean, but she has no problem throwing your shit out. It's it's like she says I have like too many books and things like that, which is just not true. Like I used to say that when you de- date that some- was a question. When you date somebody, <laughs> I want you to ask this question. So she has a, she doesn't have a problem with throwing your shit out. Though. She gets she's she, you know a little bit grumpy when stuff is in a place she doesn't want to be or stuff that like that. That would be a yes. Yeah, I guess no. yes. Okay, I here we go. Th- like we go. when so you don't date, bother struggling, just just let it out, and he'll. he'll when take you date care of someone <laughs> who works in vintage clothes, it's like every night you, you come home let's, and a goodwill took a shit. Why you're not are a you making excuses? For her treating you like a piece of garbage. Yeah, you're bringing up the problem, and then you're giving every excuse for it. And you already know. Dude, I, mean, I don't mean to call Tom a bum bitch, but he's kind of a bum bitch. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? Not be honest with the show? Not be honest with the fans? Fuck that, dude. I'm a real ass dude. I won't do that. Also, I would just say, if these three things got fixed, I would be walking around on six inches of thin air. I would be so happy all the fucking time. But, but, but these things aren't fixed, so... But, but you know, you not... Here's what you don't understand is... is when it comes to these things, that you you think that these are things... These are three things. That are th- and it's not they're three, three things. things. They're yeah. not three things. This is an overall res- lack of respect that she has for you. You do understand that. These are the they're three just, biggest fires they, going on in that forest. They just <laughs> manifest yeah. themselves. It's a huge forest. <laughs> I mean, you can have <laughs> a couple of fires. Another fire will come up if you think that fire... Once you're done with that fire, that's the point, is that another fire will immediately pop up. All right, and that's because you it's, are not been fixing. A drought. It. Yeah, yes. This Our, is yeah. not about this is secret because none of this is really about meat. It's not about meat. It's not about boxes. It's about control. It's about her submitting you, making you submit, and controlling you. And what you're the feeling that you're getting, the feeling that you feel, is the fact that she's taking advantage of you, and you're you're making excuses for the fact that she's taking advantage of you. I just love that my marriage is going to end in a studio in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> here's here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not going to end. It's not going to end. It's not going to end because you you have to understand you're a good dude. The simple fact that you're making excuses for all her horseshit and you're making excuses for her lack of appreciation, selfishness, the dictator, the fact that she's dictating your dictating and telling you what to do and not to do, and then not following. Not even considering what you would want. This is th- like this is this is not about books. It's not about meat. It's not about space. It's not about anything. This, this is about you not being a man standing up and saying, "Look, this is I'm a reasonable. You can be. A, you're, you're an intelligent dude. Clearly, you're an intelligent dude. You you understand what's reasonable you have and an what's overabundance not. Overabundance of books. <laughs> you, <laughs> you understand that what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. Yes. 
Yes. Okay, so, I mean, even if you're with a gay dude, if he fucks you, you, re- you give him a reach around. You might, <laughs> at least, that's the least you do, right? Absolutely. So, so what I'm saying to you is you understand what being reasonable is. If, you, if, you, if in your gut, if you're, d- these feelings that you, this is, if you feel a tingle in your balls, chances are you're getting ready to get kicked in the nuts. And or it that's could be a lack point. of iron from the lack of meat. Yeah, yeah that's true, too. It could be that, too. Yeah. The other thing is maybe there's also a fear and a lot of guys do have this, especially nice guys, that you're afraid maybe to lose her, which is why it's difficult to stand to up. Take the L. And unfortunately, you do have to, when you go to that negotiating table, when oh, she goes, baby. this is a deal breaker, you got, you have to go, well, I guess this deal's broken. I got to grab my shit Call and go. Call her bluff, dude. You're giving her that card to play. That's what it is, dude. She doesn't actually have that card. She doesn't want to end a 10-year relationship over you having need. Nobody wants to. Play Nobody that wants card. to tell that story. Yeah, that's the truth. No, you know? <laughs> like, what so, happened to your husband? Uh, oh yeah, he, he wanted to. Do you he realize that was, over if, me? If you just if if she had to say that, like, why did your relationship? Well, he decided that he wanted to, he didn't want to yeah. be a vegetarian anymore. I asked and to what pick. Would her, what would her girlfriends and her mother and her parents say to that? Really, that's it that's wouldn't why be that you... though. It would be he's not the man I thought he was. It, it would be, exactly, it would be, exactly. Fair, exactly. fair enough. There is a lot of that, and I have changed a lot in ten years. I mean, who, wait, do, who, wait, wait, who whoa, doesn't? Whoa, 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 since you were twenty one, yeah, you there is change. a lot of that. What I don't a lot understand. Of what? what is I'm that? Not the man I thought you were. Uh, you know, just yeah, like well, stuff like you know, if you if I'd known you were gonna eat meat, yeah, it's really different. Like I, she's like, I feel a little, you know, you know, sometimes she's like, I feel. If I knew you were gonna, if I knew you were gonna fucking keep other people's clothes. Dirt other people. I, if I know you're gonna pick out of the garbage <laughs> and, and keep other people's clothes and then sell it, I, w- I probably wouldn't have been with you either. Grab capri pants for a trash pile. I would have fucked, fucked you and kept it moving. Yeah. <laughs> if I if I if I couldn't get a bitch that would eat a steak every once in a while, I would have dumped you too. But, Do you understand? Like what? what like you, you're allowing this. Look, dude. Here, let me let me make this clear. Be, being ready to take the L is a difficult thing to do, right? If you're willing to submit your happiness for this woman, if you think that being with her is more important than your happiness, then I I can't judge that. Do you understand? I, I, I As a man, I, I wouldn't do that because I don't have to walk through your shoes. But understand that's what you're doing. You're saying my happiness, being with this woman is more important than my happiness. And... I am willing to submit whatever it needs, what needs to be done in order to stay with this woman. That's what you're saying. Now, I know saying it like that is 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 a scary thing to hear, but that's what you're saying. You're saying because it's not going to stop at the meat. It's not going to stop at your books. It'll just keep getting worse because she wants you to stop her from being an asshole. <laughs> You got to be man enough to protect her from herself, you from her, and the relationship from her. Because she will scorch the earth. She'll fuck it all up with her own, because she feels that this is, a, and I feel that this is, a, and I feel this. Here's, here's a, a crazy, uh, quick analogy. I'm gonna, um, and this is, this is my sister, right? My nephew just moved back from Atlanta, right? He was in Atlanta, he moved to Atlanta. And he doesn't really have a place to stay, so he's staying between his mom's house and here, right? My sister is staying here with me now because she's renovating her home. Now, in in my living room is a f- pile of shit. My sister's shit, my nephew's shit, everybody's shit in the middle of the living room, right? So because all of a sudden my sister goes to my nephew, she goes, uh, uh, look, s- since you decided not to stay here, because she's really mad because... He's not staying here. She feels kind of neglected because he's not staying here. He's staying with his, at his mother's house. He, he, but his, his clothes and stuff is here. So she goes, well, um, since you're not staying here, you need to move your stuff. You probably need to move your stuff out the living room. Now, here's the best part of the story. So she has a problem with my nephew because he's 24 years old, and he kind of, whenever she talks to him, she's always asking him to do shit, right? So it's never friendly. It's always, can you do this? Can you take this? Can you move this? Can so now when she talks to him, he doesn't really listen to her. He just kind of turns around and walks away, right? Yeah. But not because he's disrespectful, more because he's not confrontational, right? So um, I call my nephew up. I say, uh, I want to talk to you. He won't call me back because he thinks that I'm going to bitch at him about leaving his shit. So he, he doesn't call me back. So I run into my sister. I said, well, did you talk? She, she, I said, did you talk to my nephew? And, and you know, 
about his stuff. And she goes, yeah, well, I realize, she says, and I quote, I realize I, I'm, I'm okay with the fact of what you said. I understand what you're saying, and I'm okay with it. I go, yeah, but did you talk to him? She goes, well, I'm, I'm okay with it, and I'm not really going to talk to him, uh, but I made banana bread for him. <laughs> I go, I, I, go I, don't, I don't really care whether you made banana bread. The question is, did you talk to him? No, I, I decide, I'm not going to talk to him. I just decided. I go, I, I, do you understand how fucking selfish you are? And, and I, when I say and when I call what your wife does selfish because it's selfish, not because I'm making it up. So I said to her, I said, how could you, it, what you're doing in the, is the equivalent of you're stepping on my foot, breaking my toe, and then deciding, I, oh, I realize I broke your toe, but I'm, I'm not going to apologize. I go, you need to call him up and apologize. Well, I'm just not really ready to do that now. Well, you don't get to decide when you apologize. You've made a mistake. You're acknowledging the mistake. Then apologize. Well, I'm going to talk. I'm just not ready. Are you out your fucking mind? How about everybody get your shit? How about you get your shit out? Everybody gets your shit out, except for my nephew. He, he's the only one. Because that's what I do. I go. And then I'm, you I'm, open Christmas presents right after right that? Right after that. Yeah. Right? I, we drank eggnog. The point is, I'm always willing to take the L. And because I'm willing to take the L, nobody really, they don't really want to go to the mat with me. Because they, they know that I'm willing to fucking hurt you. Like, you got to be willing to, and I don't mean that in the context of you love your wife and stuff, but you got to understand that your happiness is more important than hers. Your happiness is more important than hers. Your ma a man's happiness is more important than a woman. I'll tell you why. This is why. Because in your happiness is encompass her happiness. You cannot be a man, have your woman, be unhappy, and still be happy. Her happiness don't have a shit to do with your happiness. She can have your happiness. If she doesn't even know what the fuck makes her happy. But if you're happy, not only are you going to find ways to compromise, have your little gay fridge with your meat in it, <laughs> whatever the fucking compromise you do, you're going to do that. You're going to make sure that she doesn't have to look at your meat. You probably will. You probably come in late knowing you. You'll come in late and cook late so she doesn't have to. Whatever the fuck you do, but you're going to have her, her happiness in mind. She doesn't give a fuck about your happiness. Do you understand that? I know what you mean. And, uh, yeah. I... I I I I'm a happily married man. Uh, I'm. No, I think, you're not. Well, you're no, not. I am. No, I am. I am. <laughs> I, I disagree with that. I think we're talking about take, going from like a nine out of ten to a ten out of ten. You know, like I'm. You know, you're black and white. I'm like very charcoal gray. You know what I mean? So I. You're like really light gray, like eggshell. Um, if you know any more kinds of gray, you're gay. <laughs> I just want to say. I do know, <laughs> right. Yeah. No mob. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, look, I, I know you want to, don't want to think, it, and no one's saying, you know, Dante did, but you're, it's <laughs> not that you're not necessarily happy, but if you want to say it's a 9 out of 10, I, 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 I know you want to believe that. I, I, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> it can't be. There's no way it can be because the way you're talking about these things. And I'm going to tell you this, passion, it's not going to stop. Yeah. Like the, it's, it, it's not just going to stop with the meat and the books and the thing, it will just keep going because this is what women do. Mara will tell you she'll just she'll destroy somebody. She will bite their head off and fucking is that true? And then feed do a on dance. their bone marrow. Yeah, why? And, and not I on can purpose. break somebody in twenty four hours. I don't know. I just do it. She can. It's the, because you're not a fit mate. It's instinctual. <laughs> it's instinctual that you, at a, as a woman, when you when you're not strong enough mate to keep her in check, that's what they're supposed to do. And. You, I'm sorry. No, 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 it no. seems like very harsh advice to take in, but just remember this, because if it doesn't change, it's I, I can't see that it's going to work out because it's the problems. Nothing gets better with age in a marriage like that. Like Problems don't get you, better you, with age. You're married? I was, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but you're going to look back on it when things, if things don't change and it doesn't work because eventually oh, the rift will get bigger and I bigger. I'm not willing to take the L. That's the thing. Like, I love but this you girl, have to like, understand why. I understand you don't want, don't want to take the L. No, she's great. I know I what you're that. going through there. Yeah. But uh, you, you're going to look down because she's going to take the L for you, by the way. <laughs> understand that. And I'm serious about that. Yeah. She will because that's what you don't realize. You're not willing to take the L. And then the next thing you know, it's been taken away from you. It's gone. She like won't Dante give you the said, opportunity. Yeah. When because they're done you, with you, they're done with because you. Because you, because you, you become an unfit mate. Now she, she, she will preface it by, "Wow, he doesn't listen to me. Uh, he's got too many books." Uh, but it, it'll really be because you didn't stop her 
from taking advantage of And you'll of look you. back on it, and you'll think, fuck, man, it's sad that I couldn't have fixed this, and this is the time y- you should fix it via you, that. And you deserve better because you're a good dude. I, I guarantee you she's not with her girlfriends explaining to you why, how great you are because you want to eat meat. She's going, you're an asshole. He's a, yeah. And you know what he does? He wants to eat meat now after all the time. And he blah, 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 blah. And his fucking books, all his fucking <laughs> books. She's not defending you. Now help me fold these Capri pants. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what she's doing. And you're doing the same. And I get what you, because, and you may not be, we- you may not be willing to take the L. But you're going to be willing to take the L either way because this is where you're heading. I can't wait till you're married. Have you been married before? Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and not again. You, would you do it again? Yeah, I'd do it again. Uh-huh. Absolutely. How many times have you been married? Once. Once. And Once. That, that for eight years. Okay, eight years. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, my, I, and it was, there's a re, I, I know exactly why I'm not married. It is my fault. It is absolutely my fault because here's what you need to understand. It's, it's always our fault. I love that concept. Uh, that, that's one of the things I love most about this podcast, that idea that if a relationship isn't working, it's the guy's fault. It is his fault. It's very empowering. Actually, it, it is beautiful. because you can fix it too. Because yeah. all you have to stand up for yourself in order for you want her to respect your 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 wishes and your your desires. You have to you have to make her respect. Those Dante, things. do you ever do anything in a relationship that you don't want to do? Absolutely. Now, all right, talk more about that because there's lots of things I don't want to do. When am I allowed to not want to do it and not do it, and when to not want to do it and just suck Single it up? Like on the balls. What's yeah. reasonable? Okay. What's reasonable? Okay, get, I a mean, chick we, we, flick, we, we're, uh, we're joking. We're joking about. I, I yeah, want to well, be the guy who who helps. Like I love. You are ta- the guy. I that love helps. taking care of my woman. But I you, love it. You are that But dude. sometimes I just but feel you, you I, have, I hate it. But sometimes you, no. He, you, here's what you hate. You hate. You hate doing things that she wants, not the things that she needs. And you have to decide that for her, because she's not going to decide it. All of it is the same. To want, need is all the same thing. Josh, yes. They just, it's just, give me, give me until you say stop. And they appreciate when you say stop. It's just like a kid. You know, a kid, you let a kid just fucking run crazy. He'll do, but it's it's the parent that goes, cut the shit that they respect and they love. Dante, in many ways, you're a religious figure. <laughs> <laughs> because half the time, you're like a crazy person on a mountain <laughs> yeah, yeah. in a filthy smock, just yelling at the sky. And then half the time, you are just, the genius laying down <laughs> truth in yeah. perfect paragraphs. It's remarkable. <laughs> and his obnoxiously confident head just got a little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, you gotta, you have to, you, I mean, it's, it is genetics. Josh, you're not even helping me here, Josh. I've never been married. But I'm saying it's just, <laughs> yes, but you understand that you, uh, you understand the science of attraction. No, make no, a no, difference if you're married, I, though, Josh. Well, no, I just don't feel. I, I feel like he has enough people debating his marriage at this point in time. But what I I feel like Fair he's enough. gonna be married for fifty years. I feel like he's gonna be. I feel like he is really happy. But I definitely agree with the fact that he is yet to see that he does have to pick his battles. And once he does pick that battle, that he's not gonna lose her over because she's gonna respect him more for it. I love the fact that this guy's a helpful person. He wants to be Absolutely. a good man to his wife. Absolutely. But at the same time, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to feel like he's been taken for granted either. And I feel like that's and happening that's a little unreason- bit too. And that's not and that's unreasonable. That's not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable. And if, she think, if she's saying that that's unreasonable, then she's unreasonable. Like when you, you're asking me what, what things do I do, it, I mean, yeah, I get it because I'm a little over the top. I get it. I'm a lot to take. I'm a little abrasive, but the reality is, as if you look, you if you you this is a new friendship, right? Sure. Would you would you call me up tomorrow and say, "Listen, I got to move all my shit out of the house. <laughs> me and my wife has got to move. Can you, we need to use your car. Get on over here and help me." Would you do that? I would never do that. Why not? Because it would be an imposition that I don't. We don't have a depth of relationship. So, it wouldn't be right. So we don't have. So we, you understand what's reasonable. Mm-hmm. Just be reasonable. If you're thinking, if you're, th- if you just ask yourself, what is? Re- ask yourself if you're being. Un- are you? Do you really think you're being unreasonable by saying I want to eat meat? I don't think so. No. I don't. Do you think? And and if she says it's she's repulsed by it, I'll get my own fridge. Don't worry about it. But uh, but I'll, then do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you need to do it. And instead of her saying, can you notch out three hours today for you to say, 
babe, I have two hours tomorrow or on Sunday to and help here's you. And here's what you here's what you say. What you have to do first is go. No, I'm not moving a box. You don't respect my time, and I'm not mad at you. But because you don't respect my time, I don't have any time for you. Now, you let me know when you want me to help you move a box, and I will absolutely, I would love to help you. But you're gonna, you're gonna call, you're gonna ask me. You're not and just you're gonna, gonna do it in advance. And you're gonna do it in advance, and you're not just gonna. It's like that scene in Star Wars where Luke starts blocking the bolts for the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's what, <laughs> that's what <laughs> listening to Dante's like. It's remarkable. <laughs> Yeah, uh, is that a good? lot of it's is more clear. clear. Very is good, it, very, it, very good. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. You saw Star Wars eighty-seven yeah, times I with did. your twelve girlfriends. Yeah, huh? oh, no, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. All fairness, Who he was, was so sleeping oh, most of the time. Fucking god! <laughs> Can yeah. I just say one thing, just in case she listened to this, and it's I, you know, it'd be great if she did. Um, what's wonderful about her is that I have very unusual problems. Like I am in comedy. This is a weird life. She could not be more supportive and loving and giving about that career choice, such as it is. Um, just in lots of ways, all the w- many ways that I'm not, I'm not kind of, you know. Say what you're gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I got something to say after you finish. Okay. Right? Um, <laughs> like a lot of the problems that the guys come to you on this show, I just I can't identify with them at all because my my lady doesn't do that, and I'm so grateful. But you know, no. You should not be grateful. Okay. I'm and, and let me explain to you why you. Well, well let me I say, can't be grateful. You, no, you shouldn't be grateful. You're already. I think what he means is you're already grateful enough. <laughs> that you don't have to keep it. Be- you're worried about being like, I want to be a good guy. You're a good guy. Stop worrying about exactly. being a good guy. Stop. Stop. You're like do- a guy just giving out money. I just want to be charitable. You've given enough, enough to charity. Enough. They named a hospital after you. You don't. You don't it's want any right. more, Harry? Because I have more. I can go to the ATM. <laughs> Listen, uh, if you're being a sucker, I'll take advantage <laughs> let, of it. Let but me your lady's already. Her, s- you know. I want to say something to you, and this is and hear this. Her love for you is not a gift. You've done everything to earn it. Do you understand that? Okay. I like Nobody it. loves anybody without them earning it. You you get love because you're lovable. That's why she loves you, because you're lovable. If you weren't lovable, she wouldn't love you. Do you understand that? Sure. So she's given you nothing. You've earned it. This is you're excited for your for your paycheck after you've worked a forty hour week. You shouldn't be. In fact, what's happened is you're working a forty hour week and you're getting paid for twenty. You should be pissed off that you're not getting all your pay because because her disrespect is is a lack of the of payment to your to your to, to all the work that you're doing. Do you understand that? Sure. I, so I and her being from. supportive, that's what the fuck she's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Just like you're supposed to take care of your woman. But, you know, there's a lot of women who aren't supportive. So I guess I can oh, appreciate yeah, but that. You know? Then fuck them bitches. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. that just those was just low life bitches that should. Who was it said that if you stab me with a knife three inches or if you stab me uh, six inches, it doesn't really make a difference? I know that as if you fuck me with a big dick. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, knew I know I got like it that. wrong. <laughs> but you, well, I guess it's not confusing. You got to not be <laughs> thankful. <laughs> yeah, I'm not thankful for somebody loving me. I'm lovable. I'm the most charming a bitch has ever been with. I'm the most charming dude ever. I'm the nicest dude. I'm the best dude. Of course she should love me. Why shouldn't he? Who fucks her better than me? Nobody. Who treats her better? Nobody. Because here's what will happen. If she finds somebody that fucks her better and treats her better, she's going to leave. She'll leave. That's, that's going to happen. So you, and it's why you will never meet her. <laughs> <laughs> so you, 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 you have to understand. You got you got to not be thankful for what you're getting because trust me, she's not giving you more. Now you said that out loud. I that sounds. I know you've said that out loud to women oh, uh, many times. I've said it on a couple of occasions in a couple of relationships <laughs> that I was in. Said what exactly? Said what? Just exactly? basically I'm like if you can find you. somebody better, good luck. But it ain't gonna happen. Like it's not gonna happen, and I've you gotta stand this. up for yourself. How you gonna do this without me? She goes, "What? I go breathe. If I don't <laughs> tell you to breathe, how the fuck are you gonna breathe?" <laughs> I didn't put it like that, That's but something similar. It was similar. Paraphrasing. It was close to that. Rel said that to me as he was leaving today. He goes, "How are you gonna do this?" I go, "All right, you were on Beige Philip one time. Slow <laughs> down. <laughs> Let's uh, calm it." You're a good dude, Tom. You're a good dude, and there's there's no reason for you to to ever feel like you you have to do more. Then you're already doing. It's just, I mean, I be reasonable. I, I, you know what reasonable is. You absolutely know what reasonable is. Just be reasonable. You're an A student, and <laughs> a woman will make you think you got a D minus. <laughs> like that's the reality. You're not it. working to your full potential. Guys, it's been fun. <laughs>
Yo! GYBB, get your balls back. I hope we help somebody. Josh, you good? I'm great. <laughs> hey, I got to help. It's the plug. It's the plug hour. Yeah, right? we get ready to plug, plug it right now. Yeah, but yeah, right. I just want to say, because Lewis had to leave, he had to go hide some weed in his mailbox uh, yeah. for his wife's home. Forget about it. But like a dummy. Shout out to Lewis, um, Hammer Fisting Podcast on the Riot Cost Podcast. He's also on uh, on uh, Bobby Kelly's podcast. YKWD podcast. You know what? You know what? You know what, dude? What, you know, yeah, you know whatever, what, the dude. Fu- whatever the fuck <laughs> it is. Um, Josh, talk to me. Uh, my one man show called Talk Story will be in the Cap 21 Theater on January 23rd, 24th, and 25th. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday at 9 p.m. And you can go to Cap 21 Box Office at Gmail to reserve your tickets. Hope to see you there. Yeah, awesome. it's a really it's a lot of great uh, stories, and I've been working with you. Harry's on. actually helping to produce that, which yeah, is awesome. Um, Twitter, give me your Twitter, your website. At Josh Ricardo, J O S H A C C A R D O. And the podcast. Podcast Slam Pig, which everyone has been on it. Slam Pig. We got to get yeah. you in there. Yeah. We're going to do it up. Yeah, no doubt. Tom, talk to me. You can find me at, at Mr. Tom Cowell on Twitter, at that's Mr. MR, Mr. Tom Cowell, Mr. Tom Cowell.com. And uh, you can read me at The Village Voice uh, every week. Hey, what, what's the column that you're in? I write a column called Cheap Laughs. It's about uh, Indian alternative comedy. Uh, and check out The Village Voice because Paige Phillips going to be in the motherfucking Paige, in The Village Voice, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're in today, Wednesday. Cheap Laughs post. Look it up. Check it out. Uh, Mara, talk to me, baby. Uh, you can always find me at maralive.com or on our website, beigephillip.com. Uh, hit us up on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything. The yeah. Beige Phillip. And you say it. Tell two friends. You say it. Uh, tell two friends. Yes. And hi, Reggie. And hi, Paul. And <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, talk to me. Uh, you can always go to my website, IHateComedy.com, uh, for all my stuff. And uh, just check out Josh's show. I, I think you're going to like it. It's a lot of great stuff, a lot of great stories. Uh, it's right up the alley of anybody who listens to this show. It's, uh, yeah. We haven't even gotten to we You got to get that midget story. You want to hear that midget That's story That's not even in, in the detail. thing. It didn't make the no, cut. No, no, it is. No, it's in it. Now it's it in it. I got to look at the right. new draft. But Cool. <laughs> got to get the midget story. I wonder if that didn't make the cut. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, you can check me out, Dante Nero. Com. Go to uh, www.bagephillip.com. Uh, everybody's link is on there. Like us on Facebook, uh, on, on the fan page. Um, love us on iTunes. Rate us and review us. Also, Amazon.com. If you got to buy some shit, you need some BY balls, some anal beads, whatever you need, some lube, pure lube, you can go on Amazon.com. Or books. Or books. Or books. Or books. Yeah, yeah. Um, or you can go on Amazon.com and buy it, and we get a little taste of that. Also, if you like what we're doing, if you think if you think I'm sincere, if you think I'm helping, tell two friends. Don't be selfish. Tell two friends. Just two. Two motherfuckers. Even a motherfucker that you don't like. You probably don't like him because his bitch is driving him crazy and he's acting like an asshole. He's taking it out on you because he can't take care of his bitch. He can't handle his bitch. So let him listen to Beige Phillip and then he'll be able to handle his bitch and you and him will be best friends. I think that would work. GYBB, get your balls back. Stop playing. Hashtag learn, bitches. The sexual revolution is being podcast. We are out of here. Square Pin Brigade, unite. Bye.